hello YouTube and welcome back to another video of science for fun we are landing straight on the web page of my YouTube home so thanks again for the support that you have shown to this channel before we start uh, first of all I hope that you all are enjoying your winter vacations and uh, an advance happy new year because after, this is the last video of this year the new the last video for year 2016 and I hope you are with your family enjoying your Thanksgiving and I hope that you spend the new year Eve with the people you love that being said uh, I have a small request from some of my subscribers that uh, some of my videos uh, they couldn't understand because English is not their native language so for you guys I'm really sorry my exams were going on so I couldn't make a transcript of the total speech but uh, for the time being you could use YouTube's own video transcripts they are not the perfect one but at least they will help you to understand the video a little bit better so that being said let's move to, to today's topic Kepler's law of planetary motion this is the Wikipedia page of Johannes Kepler the person who has derived the Kepler's law we will go into the derivation a little bit now but just have a good idea about this here is the photograph of Mr. Kepler he has derived the three laws using pinhole cameras to understand the motion of planets and based on that he has given the three laws when the uh, laws were derived generally around 1608 to 1609 no telescope was there no computer was there but he used the concept of a pinhole camera and using that he has devised the three laws so the saying clearly goes here that if you have a will you will definitely find a way that's a lot about the history legacy and lots of other thing without wasting many time let's go deep into the first law of Kepler first the first law of Kepler stated that each and every planet revolve around the Sun in elliptical orbits with the Sun at one of its focus okay now what this mean now let's go to the diagram believe me I have tried this is not the best diagram I have drawn so sorry for that and yeah let's move on let's say the planet has a mass small m and is attracted towards the Sun with a force F and the planet is revolving around the Sun with a velocity V okay this is remember this is angular velocity and the mean distance between the Sun and the planet mean distance not the distance this distance will change okay as the planet revolves around the Sun this distance will change but the mean distance is R with that being said what we have to prove in order to prove that uh, the Sun remain at one of its focus now for you if you don't remember what our elliptical path is elliptical paths have two focus or I should say two foci and the Sun will be present at any one of the foci okay so to prove this thing you have to prove that angular momentum is constant okay so I can say here that you have to prove J is equal to constant all right now how to prove this thing so in order to prove this one let's first dig into a concept of linear momentum so if I'm supposed to draw have find out what is the linear momentum of this particular system I will say linear momentum is equal to mass of the planet times the velocity vector that's it and it's great this one is represented by the linear momentum P now you must be thinking that wait a second why you have marked P with a vector sign well again the direction of the linear momentum matters all right let's now go uh, to find the angular momentum that angular momentum that is J is equal to the radial distance times the linear momentum so I can say R cross P and if you see that it is equal to R times MV which is constant obviously that's true the now remember I have said this is the mean distance the mean distance for any particular planet around its Sun is constant so as the mass of the planet and the velocity of the planet 
okay all of them are constant remember earth is rotating at this constant velocity for time immemorable it is not like that some year earth becomes happy and it just start rotating at a higher velocity no that doesn't happen so all of them are constant so j is constant what does this mean if angular momentum is constant at any given instant of time the sun has to be present at its focus because under that condition only this r can be said to be constant so am i clear i i hope i am clear so hence this is the proof of the first law you pause this video revise the first law then move to the second law so i hope that you have understand the first law this is the first law part leave it right there and let's move on to the second law the second law uh, is called the law of area and i have said during the first law that we will understand the radial uh, distance in a next law this is the law we are going to understand here the law says that a line joining the planet to its sun swipes out equal area in equal time which means that the aerial velocity this is a r e a l okay sorry for the overwriting of the planet will remain constant so let us move to the diagram and there i will explain what this statement so in this diagram let's say the planet at point p is moving around the sun at any given instant the distance between the sun and the planet is r after some time let's say time delta t the planet has moved a distance delta r the planet has moved from p to p dash this distance is delta r now if we join all these three points from the sun to point p dash and from the sun to point p and then from p to p dash we can get a triangle now let's say that the area of the triangle is delta a that's that's good now what we have just said this is a triangle now how to find the area of a triangle half times the base times the height or altitude or altitude again again depending what accent you are speaking now the planet is revolving around the sun in anti clockwise manner so this is sorry sorry okay this is delta a my mistake this is delta a delta a equal to half cross r cross delta r this is the height this is the base now you may be thinking that wait a second this is a elliptical path yes it is elliptical path but delta r is so small that we can consider this as a straight line all right now let's move on now if i divide both side by delta t what we get we get delta a by delta t equals half r cross delta r cross delta t now if we remember the basic of physics delta r by delta t is nothing but delta v distance by time is equal to velocity okay so i can replace that one with this particular value half r cross r vector cross velocity vector now if you remember the first law pause it and move to the first law i hope that you have paused the video and have checked the first law you have seen r cross v is nothing but angular momentum so i can replace this particular thing as half times j the angular momentum so we have said that delta a by delta t is equal to half cross angular momentum half is a constant integer value j is constant we have proved that thing in the first law so delta a by delta t is constant this is called the aerial velocity that is the area swiped out in a given time hence we have proved the second law that's the second law that area equal area is swiped out in equal time so if delta t is constant no matter at which point of the particular path you are looking it will swipe out equal area this is second law pause the video revise through it before moving to the third law so i hope you have understand the second law now let's move on to the third and the final law of kepler's the law states that the square of the period of revolution of a planet around the sun is directly proportional to the cube of the distance between them 
t square directly proportional to r cube okay so let's move to the very first diagram that we have drawn and understand what this statement means so let's go up here and there we have the diagram so i have said that the planet of mars m is revolving around the sun and the mean distance is r the third law state that if the planet takes time t to revolve around the sun in one complete cycle then the square of this time is directly proportional to the cube of this mean distance between the sun and the planet so t square is directly proportional to r cube or t equal to k times r now this k is called the kepler's constant and we will find the value of kepler's constant in the proof before moving out to the proof let us understand how we are going to prove this this is proved by using newton's third law of motion the third law of motion states that every action has equal and opposite reaction so i have said in the very beginning that the planet is being pulled towards the sun using gravitational force f but if there is a gravitational force f pulling towards the sun and there is no restoring force then the, our earth or any other planet would be swiped in directly into the sun and will destroy so yes there is a restoring force the centrifugal force okay the centrifugal force that arises from the rotation of the planet around the sun balance out the gravitational force so we will use newton's law of gravitation sorry and uh, newton's third law uh, newton's law of gravitation and newton's third law to prove kepler's third law so without wasting time let's move on so this is the equation that we get the left hand side of the equation is derived from newton's gravitational law g is universal gravitational constant ms is the mass of the sun m is the mass of the planet r square is the mean distance between them and the centrifugal force that arises is equal to mass of the planet revolving around the sun with a velocity v divided by again the mean distance between them now if you solve this one in the first step uh, how would you solve it so let's say that we transfer this to this side and you divide it with this side you can do many method but the very clear method is actually using the concept of velocity before doing anything else we know velocity is equal to distance or actually we should say displacement whole divided by time so it is equal to 2 pi r by t means okay wait a second you just write 2 pi r yes we have considered that this particular elliptical path is circular and hence we can say that the total surface area is 2 pi r divided by time t t is the time taken to revolve now we will use that but before moving on let's say that this mass m and this mass m can be cancelled out okay similarly we can also cancel out r but we will not cancel out just put the value of v in place of this one and then we will continue after continuing and putting the value here you will actually get this particular value g mass of the sun by r square is actually equal to 4 pi square r square r t square okay now we can bring the t here transfer everything once you have done that you will get t square is equal to 4 pi square sorry the camera just moved 4 pi square by g m s r cube the particular constant value that just i bracket out this is called the kepler's constant and has a value noted down 2.97 into 10 to the power minus 19 second square meter to the power cube inverse okay i'm writing this down 2.97 into 10 to the power minus 19 second square 
meter to the power cube in this. This value is obtained by putting the value of pi for g and ms. ms in this particular case is considered to be the mass of our sun. Okay, but we can use this to calculate the mass of any planet with any sun in the given solar system. So we can say that t square is equal to kr cube or t square is directly proportional to r cube. This is Kepler's third law. So I hope that you have enjoyed the video and I do hope that you liked the content for this week and please like, comment and I would like to know more what you think about the video. Do subscribe it and uh, click on that bell icon to receive weekly updates and thanks and Merry Christmas and hope you enjoy your new year happily. See you soon in a new wonderful new year 2017. Thanks. Bye.